Hello and welcome to our channel, Cheating Exposed. Today, we're revealing another story to uncover the truth behind the lies. So, let's get started. About seven hours ago, my wife said five words to me that I believe have set us on a path toward divorce. She said, I want an open marriage. I'm here to get some advice and insight on polyphopen marriages, what my wife might really be thinking, and what future questions I should ask her, as we will be having many more long discussions. I'm at a loss and need help. I'm 29, my wife is 33, we've been married for three years, and we have no children. She had never expressed to me any desire or shown interest in poly or open relationships during the five years we've been together. When she sat me down to have that talk hours ago, I knew something was wrong, and I did my best to be open-minded and supportive. There was no preparing for what she was about to ask of me. So I asked her what brought this on. She said it's a feeling she's had for a long time. She mentioned there had been a few men in the past with whom she had shown real chemistry and connection, but she never pursued them because of me. I noticed the pain in her voice as she forced herself to explain. My head was in a tailspin the entire time we talked. But looking over at my wife, her eyes red, her cheeks and nose swollen, her blouse stained with tears, all I wanted to do was squeeze her, hold her tight, and tell her how much I love her. But I didn't. I just let her sit there, babbling on with all her reasons. We were both trying to hold it together, and I saw and heard genuine agony in her trembling voice and hands. That made me feel even more miserable and helpless. For a brief moment, I did feel that her pain was greater than mine, so I did my best to console her. But neither of us was finding any comfort. My wife is a beautiful, gorgeous woman, inside and out. Of course, I know men will pursue her. For some context, I'm way out of my wife's league. I'm a five at best, she's a twelve. I'm not a jealous person, and I couldn't be, not if I wanted to keep my wife, who is as attractive as she is. More than a dozen times since we've been together, I've seen men flirt with her, at her workplace, bars, coffee shops, and concerts. I would see them from a distance, men flirting with her when I wasn't at her side. I know she enjoys the attention, and it never bothered me because I knew she would politely turn them all down for me. I'd gotten used to this. She's always had an infectious laugh that's near a siren's call. She has a way and an ease that could melt a stone heart. A touch from her fingertips was all that was needed to cast her spell. But opening our marriage is too much. It's a bridge too far. She went on to explain how she also needs variety. She wants to do things intimately that she would rather not do or can't do with me, her husband. Right then and there, that was the first time I ever felt so insecure and so small in regards to my wife's sexual prowess. For context, my wife has had more sexual partners than me. Me, too, her, 21, which includes group experiences, which I have never done. Again, I'm not an envious person. I told her that I, too, would love to have more variety with women, but in reality, that's not in the cards for me, whether I'm with her or without her. My wife and I love to experiment intimately and try each other's preferences, but it was always with each other. When I asked for examples of what she wanted sexually from an open marriage, she couldn't give me any specifics, other than a threesome with two men more often because that's what she enjoyed. I told her I'm open to including another man for a threesome from time to time, but only if we can also include another woman. She shifted the discussion. My wife isn't homophobic, but in the years I've known her, she's been averse to female affection, not even a cheek-to-cheek -cheek with another woman. Next, she tells me she felt something was missing in her life, that she's had this void long before she met me. And she believes opening the marriage will fulfill that. I asked why she never told me this earlier, as we shared everything about each other. We nurtured each other's aspirations, lifted one another when one lacked confidence, and protected and soothed each other's insecurities. I said if she had mentioned this while we were dating, we could have tried it. But not right now. I told her I've gotten used to married life. Being monogamous with her is all I want now, and I have no desire to go back into the dating scene. 
I would struggle with it, as flirting and charming women have never been my strong suit. In case you're curious how an awkward geek like me married a beautiful lady, she was being harassed by a man in a parking lot, and it turned physical. The guy was taller and bigger, so I sucker punched him and kicked him in the groin. I was acquitted of the charges, but the other guy served jail time. This led to a friendship, but a relationship didn't happen until I won a very popular contest of sorts. I won't say what the contest is, just that it involves politics. As the old saying goes, women love winners. I made it clear to her that I'm not comfortable changing our monogamous marriage into something else, as that's not what I signed up for. I told her she is the love of my life and the future mother of my children, and I'll do anything to help make her happy. In hindsight, I don't think I should have said that, but I really do love her and want her to be happy. I'm just not sure I can follow her down the path she wants to go. I also asked her, other than sex, what kind of relationship she wanted from this arrangement. Again, she wasn't specific, but she alluded to wanting full, long-term relationships and multiple ones. Over the next few hours, she kept asking me what it would take for me to feel comfortable and what boundaries I wanted to set. Most of my answers were I don't know, and I wasn't very specific. It was hard to concentrate. The few things I did suggest were that our marriage must remain the primary relationship above all others. Another was that if we were to go through with this, everyone involved must practice safe sex. My wife is currently on the pill, and I don't wear a condom when we have sex. I made it clear that, while we are married, she should never get pregnant by another man or have another man's child. This led to the discussion of when we were going to start our own family. The answer she gave me was the breaking point of the night. She said she wanted to try an open marriage before we started a family. Up until that moment, I had done my best to keep my composure, but hearing that shattered me completely. Everything inside me drained, like a broken pitcher of water. That was the first time my wife had ever seen me in that state. If I could erase just one minute of my life, it would be that one. If it were ever within my power, I would never let my wife see me behave like that again. But at this point, we were both in tears, both in a terrible state. She kept telling me how much she loves me and that nothing would change between us, except we'd just have to wait a little longer before starting a family. She tried to wrap her arms around me, but the moment she tightened her embrace, I got up and walked away. I couldn't take it anymore. I felt defeated. There were too many thoughts racing through my head. I wandered around the house for a while, waiting for my wife to go to sleep. I stayed in the bathroom for a long time, trying to avoid her. Her words kept playing over and over in my mind. When I finally knew she had gone to bed, I left the house and went to my parents' home, where I started looking up everything I could about polyv open marriages. I'm still struggling as I write this. What began as an attempt to jot down my thoughts eventually turned into this post. The sun is about to rise, and I've called in sick to work. Now I'm going to try to get some sleep. Sorry this was so long, but I had to get it off my chest. Update To recap, I hired a PI to investigate whether my wife had been cheating, and no proof was found. However, my trust in her is still frayed. We began seeing our first marriage counsellor together, but I wasn't satisfied with that therapist, putting it mildly, you can read update number 4 for the details. I searched for another marriage counsellor, and the one I found had a great reputation but charged a high rate and was in high demand. After waiting a few weeks, we had our first session, which was mostly an introduction to our problems. I initially said I wouldn't share what was discussed in therapy, but I think it's important to give some context. A week later, we had our second session, and the tone was very different compared to the first therapist. This counsellor asked a lot of questions, some directed at each of us individually and others to us as a couple. Unlike the first therapist, who often allowed my wife to go on lengthy monologues, this counsellor kept my wife more focused and concise, which made it easier for me to digest what she was saying. To highlight how different the approaches were, with the first therapist, I once asked my wife point-blank if she had cheated on me or had someone in mind that made her want to cheat. She wouldn't give a simple yes or no. 
Instead, she would go on a long story, essentially avoiding my question. The therapist didn't seem to care and would pick up on something my wife said about her unfulfilled needs, steering the conversation away from my original question. She even chastised me for not listening to my wife. When I asked the same question with the new counsellor, my wife again started rambling. But this time, the counsellor paused her, asking her to give a shorter, more direct response to my question. Finally, I got the answer I had been seeking. My wife, being hesitant at first, eventually admitted that there were a few men she had considered asking if we opened our marriage. Three men in total, all co-workers, though they worked in different regions and departments. She initially refused to continue and broke down, sobbing into her hands. Sitting there, watching her cry uncontrollably, my first instinct as her husband was to reach out, to console her and protect her, to make her feel safe. My heart wanted to reach out and comfort her, but my body refused to move. It was the counsellor who first offered her a tissue. She wiped her tears, and for a moment, I felt her gaze on me. I think we both wondered the same thing, had I finally lost all feelings for her? She tried to compose herself and continued. She explained that she had only seen those men for times over the past year, and she swore she never had a private conversation with any of them. They had no idea about her desire to sleep with them. Every word exchanged was in public, with others around. I then asked, why them? She admitted they were attractive and funny. She also mentioned that other women in the company had shared stories about their past office romances. When she finally revealed the names of the men she had fantasized about, I was stunned to recognize two of them. I had brief conversations with both of them before, and they had even complimented me on how great my wife was. Some sessions, my wife cried. Other times, she was stoic. But her story stayed the same. In fact, that's all I'd been hearing in therapy, how certain men had managed to capture her attention and stir her desires. After a while, I stopped paying attention. By the eighth story, I had become numb to the repeated narrative of handsome strangers who flirted with her. I know what you might be thinking, that my wife is a sex addict. I thought the same thing initially. But all of our therapists said otherwise. They explained that because she hadn't acted on these desires, she most likely had hypersexual fantasization, a condition that some teenagers experience but usually grow out of. However, adults going through a midlife crisis can also experience it, and perhaps my wife was starting her midlife crisis early, or she was still stuck in her teenage mindset. Hearing your wife tell you she wants to sleep with every attractive guy she sees, and then asking for permission, was not how I imagined spending Valentine's Day. VD had always been special for us. We used to do fun, crazy things, like skinny dipping at the beach or sneaking off to the coat room at a party. Last year, we chartered a private jet to Japan and had the entire cabin to ourselves. But this year was different. It was the first VD after her open marriage proposal. We had a normal date, and when we got home, she initiated intimacy. We had sex for the first time since her proposal. But it didn't feel the same. The passion I once felt for her was missing. I had three days off work, and we spent that time quietly at home. I reflected a lot on the past week and the things she had said in therapy. I'm still unsure of where I stand. We're both playing the martyr in this marriage, but in reality, it's me who has to make the tough decision. I believe her when she says she'll never ask for a divorce, but she'll grant one if I choose. It pains me to see her like this, a shell of the vibrant, joyful woman she once was. If I truly love her, maybe the best thing I can do is let her go, to allow her the freedom to be who she really is. Well, folks that's all. Thank you all for listening. Please like, comment, and share the video if you enjoyed it. Also, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you will be notified when we upload the next video. Take care.